Oh, that wasn't. Back. For those that aren't in here. So we, we talked about, let me try to lock this rotation here. Ah, oh, it's too late. Let me lock the rotation. Uh, boom, boom. Whoop. Lock the rotation. Okay. Are they all not locked? All right. He gave us a couple equations, actually. If you're just going around the x or y axis, in other words, just this or this, I'll do them both here, this volume was going to be a pi. A to B stands for the x values that I'm going for, instance, like uh, this was A, and this one, if I'm going all the way to here, that would be B. And it's pi r squared, and r would be a function of what's spinning around. So if I look at this picture right here, here, here is my function that's spinning around. So r is that right there. So I'm just going to write pi r squared. That would be f of x squared. Somebody tell me why I have a dx. What does that mean in terms of this situation? No. But what does it mean in this picture? Pi r squared. What's the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared. Over H. H. That's what dx means, because when we slice this, when I slice this anywhere, I'm, gonna, I'm zoomed in. You see how zoomed in I am? Yeah. When I slice this, actually, I should slice it before I zoom in. Let me slice it before I zoom in. I make a disc, a hockey puck. To you, all you see is a line. And I could have many, many, many hockey pucks, right? Many of them. But look what happens when I zoom in. Come on, any time now. When, when I zoom in, look at this, watch. Talia, when I zoom in, look at this. Look at that, how thick it really is. It's really the thickness if I go move it down so I can, oh, it's going to let me move it. There. Technically, look at this distance here. That distance is a small value called dx. It actually is the height of this hockey puck laying, if you could see it, it's actually the height. can't see the other side here, but it's the height of that disk. Okay, now, we also looked at what would happen if, if a region, if this picture went around the y-axis, like that. Interesting thing. What if I had the whole picture all the way up to, let's say, here, okay? Well, then... The hockey pucks are going this way. Let me see if I can try to make a duplicate close enough. See that? Yeah. So they're going around this way. Now, there's something more to this problem, but theoretically, volume now will be pi from an A to B. But my function now has to be solved for x. x equals f of y. Because the hockey pucks, look at the hockey pucks. There, that's a dy. And there's a lot of hockey pucks being thrown out in there. So I'm starting here at A, and I go all the way to B. So it's A to B of f of y squared. 
dy. So whenever it goes a vertical rotation like this, solve for x. Right. Now, he gave us another formula down here where he said take f of x minus your axis of rotation. Well, my axis of rotation was y equals to 0. So if I was to have done f of x minus 0 squared, wouldn't it have been the same problem? Yeah. Yes. But what happens is your axis could move. If your axis moves but nothing else changes, don't forget to minus your axis of rotation from your function. It's sort of like uh, what's happening with this problem here. If I had this thing going around like this, but I decided to move the axis down here to like a negative uh, 7, here's my axis. I'm going around there. Well, think about what I really have. I technically have f of x <clears throat> minus, minus the distance to the axis. Because I really only want this. I only want this solid. This is not solid. This is a hole. This is a hole. When this thing spins around, you won't see that. You're just going to see this. Well, too much. Try it again. Ah, good enough. When this thing spins around, you're not going to see the stuff on the inside. So you're subtracting, check this out, it's just a cylinder. So I'm subtracting pi r squared, again, dx or h. And r goes to this function. That's r. So I'm subtracting the whole. That's why we take f of x minus the axis, because that takes that apart. And, and since it's distributive property, of course it's squared. Of course there's a pi out here. Of course there's a dx here. Same thing. We played with that already. But then, look down here. I did not address this. Let me, I didn't write on this problem. Look at this one right here. Did we talk about an outer function and an inner function? Yeah. We did? Did we square them both? The, the reason that we're squaring them both is because, remember that, that, that hole I told you about? Yeah. There, there's the coming around like this. Let's see. I'm a, I, I'm a terrible artist. I just can't seem to. Oh, this way. Like that. What you're doing is actually finding out, what if the picture was solid? And so I have this big R that goes from the axis. See, in this case, we were not doing the whole thing. We weren't doing the whole thing. The axis is still probably, I think it's still, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. If the axis was still y equals to 0, then I have this big hole here. So I take the whole thing, I pretend it was solid, I pretend it was solid, and I do a volume equals a pi, f of x squared dx, and technically I'm subtracting the cylinder, which is a pi, and f of x, I'll call it g of x, because uh, this is actually a different function right here. That's a different function. I'll call it g of x squared dx. Put it all together, it's f of x squared minus g of x squared. That's assuming, that's assuming I'm going around the x-axis, okay? But he sets you up right here is, be careful, always pay attention to your axis of rotation. Every once in a while I'll get an answer wrong because I didn't, uh, oh, there's a name for that. What is the name for this problem up here, we have a solid hockey puck, right? We call that the disk method. When we do the cylinder, what do you think we call this one when each hockey puck looks like this? It's got a hole in it. Donut. <laughs> I wish. No, it's called a 
washer method. What's a washer? Yeah, they, they call it a washer. Put it together, disc and washer method. Yeah, me too. I would probably remember it better. So, there are none of them. Oh, right here. We already played with these problems, and then I think blocked. And your homework ones, I think we did all of A, and I want to make sure that I did them correctly. What was A, what that A, they didn't even number them. What was this first one doing around the, the y-axis, wasn't it? Is that, it's the next page. It was around the y-axis. So what's happening is, if I had a reflected image of this picture here, which is almost hard for me to do, Well, that's not bad. It's not bad. If this thing is going around this way, then I have this big circle on the top, and I have this little circle at the bottom. And inside both of those, if you looked in it, you would see that there's like a hurricane in there, right? There's a lot of space and they're not being used. Like a what? For the vet when they had their surgeries? Absolutely, except for, I guess this has to open up a little bit, right? The doggy collar, the head has to get in there, but it's perfect. So when I was doing this problem, I hope I did it right. Let's see. I'm going around the y-axis, so I got to solve both functions for x. Then I have a outside radius. I'll call it big R and it goes outside, so there's my, that's fine. It starts down here, whatever this y value is, whatever y1 is, and it's gonna end whatever this y2 is. And let me ask you a question. Is there an inner function that I'm getting rid of? Did I get rid of this inner function here? Because I had a big R, and I have a little r. Little r changes. When little r gets here, little r is zero. Little r, then it starts changing again, you see? See that? Yeah. Little r does change. When it gets up here, little r is the same as big R. When it's right here, little r is same as big R. But see, you're integrating you're integrating from the smallest y, which is what was the smallest y? Tell me without me zooming in. What's the y value of this point? At this point? Yeah. Um, Didn't you label it? And the other one was? Uh, the other intersection? Yeah, up here. Just two. Two. So the axis hasn't moved, so I don't have to do minus the axis. I just have to do... Uh, do, do you think this is a, a washer? If I, if I slice it, will I see a hole in the middle? Say at some places? See, I don't know if I did this one right the other day. Part of me is thinking I should have done this with uh, this happening. Did I do that? I did? Okay, then I did it right. I, I was sleeping uh, Monday night and I was thinking about these problems. I'm sure you've done that before. And I was thinking, did I, did I do those right with the, the washer? Because I didn't tell you the word washer. Did I do them correctly? And Joseph said I did. I did? Okay, so it should have set up. Did we get an answer already? Well, let's just plug it in again. And we can use our calculator. What is the outside function solved for x? That was the line. Y squared. Y plus 2. And then what was the other function solved for X? Y squared. y squared, period? Okay. So with our calculator, we could, we could just do that right out. I think, I don't know if I have my calculator any longer. I guess I can put, oh, I had it turned off. We did it in our calculator and we got, what was our answer? 14.4.
pie. Is that what you said? Yes. Thank you. I always forget pie. Mr. You don't take into account the absence of rotation? Yes, I did. Zero. It was zero. And where would you put it more than zero? Oh, I would do the, like this one right here? The same, no, that was X is four. Oh, wait, that's it. That'll do it. Look at it. Find the volume when the region is rotated about the line X equals to four. So now, if I get rid of all my shading that I have done, best as I can, and I change the axis to be X equals to four, well, where is X equals to four? Conveniently, it's right here. There it is. I'm still, I'm still going the same direction, still a vertical spin, but my axis is over here, so the picture is going to look a lot different. The picture, I hate it when this doesn't slide. The picture is going to be more like a reflected image. Uh, like that. So then this whole thing is spinning around. Here's the outer. The outer is just doing this kind of thing. The outer is doing that. You see that? You don't even see it. It looks like a bell. But on the inside, we're sweeping out this hurricane, this, this tornado. See that? So the work is identical, except now we take into account that axis. So when I set that one up, it's still going to be integrate a pi. Oh, wow, I didn't even put my pi on this one up here. Pi, negative 1 to 2, because the y values still start at negative 1 and go to 2. But this time, I'm going to do the outside. Oh, I think that changes too. The outside function now is the, the curve. So that's going to be the y squared. So it's y squared take away a 4. Then I square it. That's the outside. That's if it's completely solid. Minus the inside was the y plus 2. Take away the axis 4 and square it dy. So we could go back to our, I'm going to pause here for the person who's watching the video. Which function is on the outside? It was the parabola one, right? That's the curve. The parabola is on the outside, the line's on the inside. So when I go back to the... Oh, they, yeah, well, he did this on purpose. He was so creative. Because we had the same answers for the other ones? Yeah. All right, so this was 48 how much? 48.6 pi. And we had the same answers when we had, because he designed it that way. It's not always true. Just because you switch the axes, it's these two functions work out pretty good this way. Could I have made up a problem that did that? Probably not. This guy's really good. Unless he got him from an AP problem. Maybe an AP problem. So I'm just recording myself locking the, oh wait, uh, back up here, mm, I don't know. Um, let's see, what, fine, we already did, we already did one and two, did we not of this problem? In the homework, we didn't get ahead of the homework? Nobody knows? None of you have answers on this page? I could have sworn we got half of them done. And there's only four of them there. We didn't finish any of them? Okay, well, let's do it then. So here's this beautiful shape. I'm guessing this must be my line. Y equals X minus 2. I'm guessing this is my curve, which is the natural log of x. That would make sense that that would be the curve. And that would be the line. What is he saying in A? Find the intersection, because he didn't give it to us. So do you guys 
know how to find intersections of two graphs. You need to, it's one of the basics that you need for the AP Calculus exam. Matter of fact, let's do one step further. You know how we store our functions in the calculator? Let's also store the intersections because we don't know how many times we're going to need them. So I'm going to go back to the, uh, am I recording? I don't even see it. Yes, yes I am recording. Yes, I'm recording, but I'm going to pause to find the intersection. Okay, so the intersections were, give me the ordered pair for the bottom one here. What was that ordered pair? What was this one down here, right here? Talia, did you not do it in your calculator? It's point one times eight. Um, eight more decimal? Yeah. No, we'll leave it at that. Next one, the y values? Uh, negative 1.8414. And good job. And the top one was? Three point one five. Five. Only went to two? Maybe that's all it had. Maybe it was perfect. No, I thought I saw more. Or maybe you have it set on it. You know you can go to your, uh, is it format or mode? And you can tell it how many decimals. I always put it on float. Is it Inspire, sir? Oh, Inspire. I don't know how to change it then. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Anybody got more decimals than 1.5? Joseph, Amy, Halia? You were supposed to write these intersections down. Make sure you can find them. Andrew, what would you get? 3.146. What's after the 6? Oh, yeah, it has those in the SPD. We only went to 3? 146, okay. The Y value? The Y value, 1.146. And the X was 3.146. That's weird. Okay. So that's what he wanted for. A. Oh, then he says find the area. Oh, okay. He wants the area of this region. Good, good review. Good review. Area is from A to B on the X's. I'm going to put 0.1585. And I'm going to put the other X was 3.146. And I have the top function is my ln of x, ln of x, minus my bottom function, x minus 2. Be careful, that's in parentheses if you're doing it by hand. But I'm not going to do it by hand. I'm going to go to my calculator. So here, I pause again. Calculator. And you're going to find out, guys, a lot of the problems will just be using your Anybody key it in right? I was having trouble squaring. I guess that's why I got used to putting it into the function itself. It was easier. That's 2 plus y squared? It was uh, 2, where? No, it was 2, it was y oh, it's plus 3 y. all squared. Wait, it was y, where's my plus 2 at? It was, what was the line? The line, what are the, I think, no, it was y1. y1 plus 3. That's what it was. Okay. The other one was y2 plus 3. The whole answer is 0? I don't think I plugged it in right. Anybody else? I mean, there's too many spectators. Did you square them both and do the integral? What'd you get? 10.886. Oh, okay. Don't be afraid, guys. You're right. That's, I mean, if I ever get the same answer as Andrew, I'm not questioning it. 
I mean, if I got the different answer, I'm just going to do a mic drop and walk out. Take Andrew's answer. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, he's a smart guy, but you know what? There's several of you in here that I trust, so a lot of you in here I trust. And every time I try to catch Talia not knowing what's going on, she always shows me she does know what's going on. She just multitasks. But she doesn't understand that sometimes that can be disruptive to other people because they can't multitask. And so paying attention to what you're doing is... Write and evaluate an integral expression that can be used to find the volume of the solid of R when it goes around the y-axis. So if I go back to my picture... Oh shoot, I hate when that does that. There it is. Oh, come on. You erase it. I want that solid going around the y-axis. So it's going to look something like uh, spinning around here. So this is touching the, the, the y-axis, so I'm going to get a straight line. Oh, it's a flower. See that piece? It's going around like that, even up here at the top. What happens? What happens when you look to, at it from the front? Looks like a solid flower, right? What happens when you look from the top? It's a flower. Yeah, from the top, what do you see inside? A hole. What? Yeah. A circle. Circles. A whole bunch of different circles. So the line is the outside. The curve is the inside. What do I have to do different? Oh, wait a minute. I'm going this way, guys. I got to solve both functions for x. Good luck. What's the line going to be? x equals to what? y plus 2. y plus 2. That one's easy. That's going to be my y1 because that's my outside function. How do you solve? Okay, this is a hard one. How do you solve y is natural log of x for x? For x. Yeah. How do you get rid of the ln? Yes. You exponentiate. There you go. <coughs> Therefore, x is equal to e to the y. Now you know why you learned to do that in pre-cal. Pre e to the y is my second function. And I need to use the y values that we've already saved. I saved them as uh, L and R. Yeah, L and R. So Y or, values? No. Are the X values? Because I think the X values are like W and E. Yeah, W and E. Yeah, it was L and R, I think. I'm trying to look at B. Why did I need L and R? Hold on here. Why did I need L and R? Find the volume of the solid when it's rotated about the horizontal Y. God, I think I messed up on number two. Didn't I use this? Wouldn't I use the same limits as, as number one? Hello? When I did the horizontal line Y equals to three, wouldn't I have still used uh, the same limits of the x's? Andrew, did you use the same x's as, as this first, as this one here? You did? Okay. Why am I writing L and R? It should have still been, in my place, west and east. So I corrected myself. So this one is going to be my L and R. Left and right, I called it left and right for the up and down. And so those are my y values. And it's going to be my line, which was y plus 2 minus the axis. What was the axis? 
it goes around the uh, y-axis, right. zero. This is actually number three. So it's y plus two squared. By the way, it's because I have these, I have these uh, washers in this problem. I still have these washers. So that's why it's square that minus e to the y, square that dy. Should be the answer. So let me try to fix this one now. I'm just going to key it in. I'm not even going to do any y equals, except for my limits. I'm just going to add 5.442. Say it again. I was just seeing if he caught the pie. Yes. What's hard about number four? Look at the region. It's not lonely. He's got a, a, a brother and a sister. Look at There's three. Four, three, two. Actually, somebody yesterday, believe it or not, 3B class said there's actually three regions in one of these problems. I'm wondering if one of you will figure it out. Maybe it was a different, maybe it wasn't this problem, but it was like it. Uh, what this is, is here are two functions. One's a sine curve. I'll bet you any money that's the sine curve. And I'll bet you this is the exponential curve. Wrong one. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm looking at. Try that again. Exponential curve is this one. There it is. Probably. A, a four says, find the volume of the solid generated when the R is revolved around the horizontal line Y equals to eight. Just the R going around y equals to 8. So if this is my y equals to 8, just this r, can you see what's happening here? Here's the picture of it. And here's the copycat over here. Right? That thing is spinning around. What does it look like from the outside? Anybody? That thing spinning around? Do you see the circle? There's going to be a big hole in it. But you won't see that until you look inside. All right, it's going to be kind of difficult. Let's try it out. Volume is pi. Oh. I don't have the I don't have the intersections. Do I have I need them, right? I need to know this value here where that intersects and when it intersects up here cuz this thing intersected two times. Wait, I don't want that one. Hold on. I want the this one here. Sorry. That one. So you got to find the intersections. I'm just going to call them A and B. I'm going to leave it up to you since this is a homework problem. This one's A. This one I'm calling B. So I'm going from A to B. Those are the X values. X equals to A. X equals to B. And let's see here. Uh, what's the outside function? Just to the yellow, what's the outside? I'm going to do it in blue. I'm going to go, go from outside to outside. What's the curve on the outside? The sine curve. That would be F. Is there going to be a big hole in the middle? Yes. yes. But here's the interesting thing. This is confusing. This whole thing starts at F and it ends at G. So technically, guys, it's going to be F minus G is the amount, I think. Does that make sense? This distance here is F minus G. 
and the axis changed, minus 8. It's F minus G minus 8, all of this squared. Minus, anything else? Hold on. I don't know if I have to subtract. Does anybody have a different opinion? Because I want to almost want to second guess it here. Why didn't it erase? No. Oh well. I love how sometimes it erases even the next day. Then right now I just got done doing this and it won't erase it. And if I hit delete. Like just, I want this picture part delete. Oh wait, that'll work. That's gonna erase. That's gonna erase what I just wrote up here. I want the coloring erased. No, it just doesn't. Oh, maybe that'll do it. Oh, no. Anyway, think about it. Is there a disc and washer, or is it just discs? Or could I do it? Could I do it like? Well, this erase. Let me see if this will erase. This will erase. Could I do it as all of F, all of F, wrong one, all of F minus 8 squared. That would give me the outside. Then come back and get rid of the inside, the blue stuff. That would be G minus 8 squared. Who thinks that would do it? Nobody has an opinion. It is. Well, go to the center of it, right here. That distance goes all the way to F. That's my sine curve. The hole is always going to be created by the G, the exponential. I think I can do it like that. I think that will work. You can set that in your calculator very easily. By the way, guys, this is definitely a calculator problem. They would not make you integrate those things on a free response. Guys, that was just region R. Is there more on this? No. Um, if you flip the page, it says find the volume of the solid generated when S is no longer on the board. I don't have that. Do I? Let me look. Okay. R around Y equals a negative 1. So that means this region R is going to go Y is a negative 1 down here. This is just like the other problems we've done. Let's see, I, I'm just a terrible artist here. Ooh. I don't know, is that close? Yeah, maybe like that. There it is. There's the hole on the inside from the inside function all the way through. The outside function is the sine curve all the way through. Again, from A to B. It's the same intersection. No, 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 no. It's from B to C. I have to find that intersection. So here goes. Integrate B to C of the sine curve, which was F squared. Oh, F minus minus 1 plus 1 squared minus g minus minus 1 squared. Questions? How do you get good at these? How many? A whole lot. Now, the, the cons academy that I gave you that is due over the weekend isn't even there on the, it's just practicing your integration. But Monday, I will be for the week, the 
week before the AP exam, I will be putting your last time, which will have areas with under one curve, areas of two curves. It will have volumes. It may have a, a differential equation quiz on there for what I'm gonna lecture you uh, in the clouds. So we can't be really long. Yeah, we'll be long. It's the last one. We, you know what? When, when I was a assistant principal at the at the junior or not, sorry, at Laferia, and I would have work all day long. I have to monitor students. I have to do office referrals for the students that have gotten trouble. Got to have parental meetings. Got to go to ARDS. Got to go to 504 meetings. This was every day. Then the principal would assign me another job to do, and I would say, "Well, what am I supposed to do that? Because my whole day is." full and know what he would say do it in your in-between time what what does that mean on the way to the restroom when i have to go to the restroom that would be my in-between time well sometimes we did work before lunch but i try making it a habit not to because once you start working through your lunch it becomes expected then and the law really was that I was I was entitled to a lunch as well, even though I was an administrator. I don't think the administrators here ever skip a lunch. I don't think so. So I mean, our third year skips all the time. I think it's fair. Yeah, but they take their lunch when third period starts. I didn't get my lunch either during lunchtime because I had to be standing in the cafeteria. Yeah, and then we had one time we had. Uh, two different lunch periods. We had one that was devoted just for freshmen. And they acted so bad without having the upperclassmen there. Well, because we were running a freshman academy and they had their own hallway. All their classes was in one hallway. Very seldom they had to go and do an elective class somewhere else. They pretty much were self in there. So they continued that thought. They're all together. Let's just keep them at lunch together, too. So, I mean, the school kind of does like that. They have, like, the freshman, like, class. Oh, no. I actually started doing those homework problems for you. This one. That was it, wasn't there? Anything else? Maybe I deleted it. No, he didn't do anything. Oh, it's there. Oh, why is it? Why did I leave it there? All right. Well, anyway, all right. I'll just go back to the other page. Uh, y equal the R around Y equals to negative one. Okay.